Just back on. Oh. Uh, we're coming back on the air after an interruption. Hello everybody, a uh, quick video because I have some important things to tell you. Um, the cemetery, the Evans City uh, Cemetery in Evans City, Pennsylvania, the, that's the cemetery that's in the opening scene of the original Night of the Living Dead movie. Well, the chapel there was in danger of being just torn down and forgotten about pretty much, except for, of course, by fans <laughs> of the movie. and. Um, cast and crew, of course, in the movie, you will find that place very endearing as well for obvious reasons. Um, Gary Striner, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he went to a meeting last night for the board of directors to try to save that chapel, and he was successful, his appeals were successful, and props to him for doing that, and props to everybody in um, the group on Facebook that is involved in the project to save the chapel. It's called the, the Living Dead Festival group. I have a link to it down in the description and they need as many members as possible. This chapel will not re be rebuilt without volunteers, without a lot of hard work, a lot of donations of money, skill sets. Um, they need masonry people. They need people who know how to do roofing. They need carpenters. They need anyone who knows anything about building anything. <laughs> they basically need help doing this. Um, it's very important and I urge all of you guys who ever love the movie or and, and find this to be important like I do to please go join their group and um, you'll find updates there about how the project's going and how you can become more involved in helping save the, the cemetery. Um, also please pimp out the group. They, they need as many members as possible. All right, and I'm sorry if I'm not very articulate. I woke up not long ago and found out I was out of coffee so <laughs> But I feel I, this is very important, so I figured I would make a video with my tired face and all. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys have a good day, and please go join the group. Thank you. Well, I, I, as I was watching, that, um, I was thinking we should have put a, a super underneath it saying that, you know, that we're not saving the chapel again. Um, uh, that... That little piece of video um, started a whole new era. Uh, it started a whole new aspect to the legacy of Night of the Living Dead. Um, it, it just snowballed from there, you know. And, and, and I think when I first saw it, you know, it just was so uh, touching to me. I didn't, uh, obviously I didn't know Trisha then. She didn't even know if she was pronouncing my last name right. And, uh, and it, it just, it, it, it was this, I don't know, the, the beginning of, of a new era. Um, and we, obviously we, we went through, we, we collected the money needed. Um, we, we simplified things. We found a contractor. We didn't, it started out that way. I mean, we had so many people who were volunteering, uh, you know, to, to come up and, uh, and work on it that were carpenters and were roofers and so on and so forth. But the problem with it was you, we could have never built a schedule uh, off of that. So, uh, you know, through your, your generous donations, we, uh, we found a contractor, Mark Gerson, and uh and and he and his he and his cohort did it all they they rebuilt the whole damn thing so here we are another episode of night talk um tonight as i think everybody that's here should know by now we're going to be chatting with uh trisha and gore martin kind of see what they've been doing for the last couple of years and probably reminisce a little bit about some of the 
some of the things that uh, happened along the way. Um, and we're also going to uh, introduce somebody that a lot of Pittsburghers know. He's been around this town in a, in a, in a pretty heavy way for uh, a, a good number of years. Um, his name is Sean McCarthy. You might know him as a, a, a tattoo artist and, and a guy that owns two uh, tattoo shops in the Pittsburgh area and amongst the top. Um, so without further ado, why don't we bring on Mr. McCarthy? What's up, everybody? Hey! Uh -huh. How's it going, man? Uh, another hectic day. Nice rainy day in Pittsburgh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, he hectic is... Uh, Yes. Well, you have young children, so. Oh, yeah. Bouncing around being a single dad and, and a couple tattoo shops while tattooing and doing everything else. It's fun. It's definitely an adventure. Exactly. So you knew my, you've known my son for ages, right? Uh, high school almost, right? Yeah, right out. Of, him right out of high school, actually. Uh, I've been. I opened my tattoo shops back in uh, 91. So I've been bouncing around between that and working on some movies here and there, trying to help out as much as I can. Hooked up uh, on Two of Lies, the Romero project back in 89. And then uh, moved over to uh, Night of the Living Dead to remake them. Been bouncing back and forth to horror shows, comic book shows since I was a kid. Just uh, kind of immersing myself in the art world as much as I can, trying to keep a balance. So, so you've pretty much, um, I mean, you kind of carved a, a, a niche for yourself or a niche for yourself. Um, you just start, you, you just started becoming an extra in, in all these films that come to Pittsburgh. How many films do you think you, I think production wise, I think we're, uh, I'm in the forties, mid forties. Sorry about that. Oh, good. oh no! Uh, now I can't hear because I'm not on my Bluetooth. Um, hmm. Uh, anyway, how many movies? Uh, it's in the forties now. Probably like twenty something television right. productions, a couple commercials, some stuff here and there when I can fit it in. Uh, that's amazing. I, I'm going to have to. Um, you know what? I'm going to introduce. Um, uh, Trisha and Gordon right now because I'm going to have to get off and come back on because unfortunately technology uh, had a phone call come in and, and that took me off my Bluetooth and I can't hear a damn thing. So uh, why don't we bring up uh, the Gordons? I mean the Martins. <laughs> hey, hey. What's going on, Gary? I know you said you cannot hear a thing we're saying, so I'm going to say all sorts of things right now about how I wish you still hold, had that hold on just a minute because yeah, I can't. I'm I'm gonna uh, I, I can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> so let me uh, let me log out and come back in. Keep an eye out for me, Jim. You guys Here. talk amongst yourselves. So it's very nice meeting you today, Sean. I'm glad that you've gotten your audio situation kind of uh, a little more copacetic. Oh, yeah, I jumped over to the other part of the shop real quick. So. Yeah. I thought I'd be oh, the one having technical problems. a little problems. bit more about your, your work in the industry. Well, I mean, it's it's wild. It's, it's kind of neat to see how these Pittsburgh projects, how something like the whole artistic end of Night of Living Dead has influenced. Oh, yeah. Like, like me every day, like doing crazy horror projects and working alongside all kinds of, like, horror guys at conventions yeah, now, like, it tattoo artist and the horror production company and the action figure company and the comic book guy and the character guy <laughs> all, all together for sure it's kind of wild that's the best no that's <laughs> awesome man that's awesome sean actually um that was uh, back in what year was that I, I can't remember the year we decided uh we found a guy in pittsburgh that had an ambulance well first of all I have been like trying really, really hard to figure out how 
we could do tattoo at one of our living dead festivals. And Sean just kind of looked at me and laughed and says, no, well, you know, no, <laughs> you can't just do it out on a park bench. You know, you, <laughs> there's a, there are certain safety uh, rules that we've got to follow and so forth and so on. So I found the guy with an ambulance. I call Sean and I'd say, look, can, can you do it in an ambulance? And he goes, yeah, I think we probably could do it in an ambulance. And, and we got this poor guy's ambulance and then we decided that, <laughs> <laughs> that just an ambulance wouldn't do. So we had to put the whole uh, a hand and an arm were like our logo at the time. And, and, and Sean came up with this crazy guy on Butler street, I think somewhere way the hell down, up river <laughs> that, that did uh, vinyl work. And uh, he dropped us off there and like, 20 hours later. <laughs> yeah, Benzie came through with that ambulance on the quick. That was great. He sure did. Yeah, well, and, and then the funny part about it is, and, you know, the whole time I'm saying Benzie, and then we're talking about, you know, putting vinyl on this whole thing. I mean, it's, it's pretty much there to stay. You know, it's not easy to get off. Go, no, no problem, no problem, no problem. <laughs> So here, after all this whole event is done years later, uh, Benzie decides that, that he really wants to restore this van or this uh, ambulance, and he's got to take all that vinyl off. He bitched me <laughs> I mean, for days. And still, I think if I see Benzie, he's going to give me that bit of stink eye <laughs> yeah I'm sure for like an ambulance or like some sort of hospital series or something real quick that have to like, really? <laughs> right yeah oh, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway th those are all part of the uh and, and so uh, the unfortunate thing was i think we were a bit of, i think that must have been 2010 or 11 i don't think we were they were definitely worried about us bringing the wrong kind of crowd into the cemetery still at that time. Like pretty early. <laughs> well, well we were still worried put about up with the whole ambulance tattoo scenario for sure. By the time yeah. they got well, Baker Bob though, Bob was cool. <laughs> Bob was cool with us as long as yeah. he was respectful. Bob retired, unfortunately. Bob's not, not, oh. not up at the cemetery anymore. Yeah, he finally he finally retired from from this job that he was doing while he was in retirement. But, but that was uh, actually one of my favorite interviews that we did when we first came up there and, and we're, we're looking at the chapel before it was, was actually repaired was talking with Bob and just getting his perspective on all the fans over the years that have come through the cemetery. He's like, yeah, they dress weird and all, but they're nice and they're respectful. And <laughs> Bob was just, he just laid it out. He's like, yeah, they're weird, but, but they're cool. They are, <laughs> Right. Yeah, he would definitely guide people up to the right spot because people were driving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he got to know. Exactly. The drive and they're in the wrong a spot. mile away what you were coming up there for. And he was like, come on, it's over here. The one you want to see is over here. <laughs> they turn the lawnmowers off and come over. And yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bob was good to it's, it's amazing how, uh, <laughs> you know, well, imagine back then there, there had been prior to this whole notion to do a living dead festival and do the restoration on the chapel and all that kind of stuff. There really hadn't been much conversation in Evan City about Night of the Living Dead for quite a number of years. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, people woke up and I think I think probably 50% of the population was really happy that it was that way. And they never wanted to hear the term night of living dead, as long as they were still alive. Uh, you know, there were aspects of, there still are, you know, as, aspects of the town that literally uh, perceive it as dev devil worship, you know, <clears throat> it's uh, satanic and, uh, Anytime you use the words living and dead in the same, you know, text, uh, it, it, it doesn't go. But, but we had to pioneer through all of that stuff. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Trish and Gore, you, you, you know how many, you know, 
uh, Paula, Paula Grubbs from the, the uh, Butler Eagle would, you know, have an interview with like the guy from the tourism department. Right. And he'd make some comment like, oh, yeah, they're hoping to get busloads of tourists up into the cemetery. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the problem was it would all come back on me. I right. never said that. Right. That was the last thing in my world. But they didn't know who else to point to. So sure. that, that was a really interesting aspect of the, of the overall challenge. But um, it, it just completely got... Uh, you know, obliterated uh, by by all of the love and the and 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 just how people jumped on board and and just said, yeah, no, this has to be done. Let's save this place and uh, and and the creativity. Well, again, uh, Trish, that was your your video that we played in the beginning. There was that was kind of it. That that was a message to the fans from a fan. You know, and I think I don't think there's any more uh, sort of uh, viable or, uh, you know, important message than, than hearing it from your own. You know, otherwise, there's always, uh, you know, people. Well, now let's let's not even talk about now. But, but, but back then, even though people were skeptical, you know, it's like, you know, well, what's really going on here? We don't really know Gary Streiner. Uh, you know, he's just kind of popped on the scene here for after being away from it for probably 45 years and uh, 40 years. And, and and so there was a lot of skepticism. But when it came to the the fan base, that curtain just came down. You know, when when you're dealing with people in real life, th that curtain may never come down, you right. know, um, and, and you're always trying to battle to prove yourself to people that you're really a good person and you're this is really a good deed. And uh, and and it was just for, for the whole, um, you know, Save the Chapel project, that curtain immediately came down everybody everybody just started saying what can we do and trisha i got to tell you that that a lot of that you know came from from your um your little piece because it was just so from the heart you know um break in my heart that was gonna be the last yeah one of the last one of the last physical things locations, left from that you know? movie I mean, it was obviously, just we, being neglected and 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 had life left to give. Let's be honest. Oh I yeah, mean, it broke they, my heart though. I'm like, no, we can't allow this to happen. That's yeah. this is not. Well, I, I just I have to hold on here. Yeah. I have That's to. Uh, yeah, I just have to let everybody yeah. see that it does still live on for sure. Watch right there. Watch it, chapel. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, look, it was Prince. Oh, but nice. but that was it, yeah. you know. You'd all of a sudden, I'd, I'd just, you know, there'd be a conversation, and somebody would just say, or, or I'd say, "Oh, I got, I, 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 uh, you know, I need flyers," you know. And oh, all yeah, of a sudden, yeah. you know, there would be fifteen flyers, you know, all of them done by artists who work every day as artists, you know, and and that, um. And that just built and built and built and built and built uh, to the to the very end. We we really uh, we really rocked the whole convention horror uh, horror convention scene. That was uh, there was a point where you know every convention was talking about save the chapel and and uh, and had a table there and people were same thing. The you know the the producers of of uh, promoters of all those events, you know, said, sure, yeah, you can have a table. How many people, you know, I, I don't want to start naming people because I'll never remember them all. Uh, but, but I'm going to I'll point out s specific ones me, being Derek Reed, yes, you know, I, was about to say, I got 
Beach blood with him beach. and Ashley. Blood at the beach. The, yeah, table, the, they the gave, table there. The table they gave for saving the chapel at Blood on the Beach. Right there in the front. Was directly in the front lobby. You could not come into that event. <laughs> you literally could not get into it was that funny. event it was without funny. passing by us. The little girl <laughs> who played in um, The Walking Dead. Yeah. I forget her name. Madison. Maddie. Ma I think so, yeah. But she was so cute. She Such ended up, we had, we had Katie and Nigel. For those who don't know, we do it. Well, we did a thing called the Corpse Clock News, and we had characters, Katie and Nigel, and um, we had those set up around the table just to kind of draw attention to it and a little more. <laughs> and she was running to go to the bathroom or something. She tripped over it, and she, she, and Katie's fed, head fell off and was rolling down the, <laughs> the lobby floor. And she, she grabbed it and walked back and goes, "I am so sorry." <laughs> holding, <laughs> holding Katie's head. Priceless. This is that head. <laughs> <laughs> this head fell off of the body, and she was like, "Oh my god, I am so sorry." I'm like, it's like no, it's, it's, it's okay. meant to come off. I'm it's like, fine. I knock her head off all the time, baby. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah but that was a big part of it was all of us getting out and and being at all of those different conventions, and the word was already out. You'd have people walking up, and they they weren't asking, "What is this about?" They were like, "I've heard about this." How can I help? Yeah. That's a lot of the response. That was really cool. Well, to have out of town visitors to the shops and uh, friends come in. Just this past weekend, friends from Baltimore stopped by, said hi. Hey, we're going to Evan City. So it's <laughs> really wild to see that happen. We just had friends in from Cali uh, about a month ago. Same thing. Uh, well, we can do that after we go to Evan City. What, what sort of influence? Personally, Sean, have you had of Night of the Living Dead on your tattoo business? Oh, it's wild. It's, it's pretty neat to see people and hear people talking about it whenever uh, I'm working on somebody. Their friends will mention it. They'll start looking up my, like, totally non-updated IMDb or something. It's neat. <laughs> get, get, get some attention here and there. I mean, we just have so much stuff. There's so many things to see hanging around the shop, too. Uh, artwork. A lot of horror-themed stuff, for sure, across the years. But, uh, Things like this, you know, the Night of the Living Dead stuff definitely is the draw. I mean, we're a Pittsburgh right, shop. right. Pittsburgh, that's a, a Pittsburgh movie, so I can barely see it on my. But that 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 is a Terry Callan. That's a ter Terry Callan. That's my favorite piece of Terry Callan work, right oh there. God. I almost um, <laughs> almost uh, kind of know what that looks like. <laughs> Andy, Andy. <laughs> I've got quite a wow. bit of Terry artwork floating around, though. He's... We've got Terry Callen all over the place. I love Terry. Well, maybe, maybe it's a it's a nice energy, but um, if if we could have uh, Jim, I don't know if 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 we could be close to to showing the music video. Um, which which was another thing. Uh, sorry, Sean, it just happened you through another tattoo it. artist. Oh, but no, no, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, <this laughs> but that was a, a cool thing too. You. All of a sudden, this you know, Rick Shrek all of a sudden says, "Hey, I won't hear." Uh, he, he designed it. I have it. He probably can't see it, but mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, and he said, uh, "Anybody who wants one, I'll do it for twenty five bucks." Yeah, you know, for yeah. twenty five bucks, yeah. and and I think there were like thirty eight people or something like that that ended up yeah. getting them, but there was one, there was one big weekend uh, where uh, we uh, all went over to the other side of Pennsylvania to Rick's shop, and we all got our tattoos, and we had a party after. Uh, I mean, it was, it was quite Price an event. Play. Yeah, I saw Jody Price play over there in New York. Yeah, was that awesome. cool or what? That was awesome. That, and actually, there's some footage from that concert that night. Yeah, yeah in the video. In right. the video that you're talking about, yes, that we shot that night, yeah. He's playing hey, Jim, is it possible to run the video? He's got it queued up. Yeah, he said yep. he's ready. Well, Beautiful. go. We're Sorry. setting out. Yes. We're setting out at 7.45. Nice. So we're going to get there with plenty of time.
drag you home And then we'll organ grind you Oh, you'll be hurting Behind the curtain Oh, let me tell you that our victory is certain We sing the undead cheer Campus has got me dancing Like rock and roll from the bottom of Atlantis Now I'm confessing I hate your mom to test it And shut her up with my little Smith and Weston Done? No, no, it was not done, Gary. <laughs> that was just the outline. <laughs> that is my favorite part of that video. Is it done? No, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I was video. so out of it. I had been up like for three days I before you were, that. You were asked out, but that was just priceless. I, did, I love that. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I know. I know. That's what made it so <laughs> <laughs> Sean's like, yep. Yeah, but that, that was just that, that was just a nice little look into um, the energy, you know, the, the camaraderie. The none none of these people knew one another really before this. A lot of them had just met at that event, you know. Um, people i still keep in touch to and consider very good friends to this day oh yeah as a result of that oh of yeah that right that, that's that's amazing we still talk to uh, i still talk to derek reed sometimes and ashley and just a whole bunch of people beth Bogosi, just everybody man i mean it's, it, it is when i say people are my living dead family it's not like a cult mentality or anything or like oh you know or or no, these as are legit no, people they, that are People, like, like Kyra, like Gary, you're my uncle. Uh, John <laughs> Russo's my uh, my dirty uncle, um, who I love very much. Kyra is my sister. I swear, I will talk to Kyra on the phone for four hours. She you know, will. I, I love. She, <laughs> she is my sister. I don't care who our parents were. Get her and Kyra on the phone with a bottle of wine. I oh, can, it's I can over. Just we'll, talk. we'll talk about shark movies. Yeah, Sharknado comes up. <laughs> yeah, and cats cats <laughs> but that's what life's all about you know it's about about that camaraderie and and again sean i come back to you because um i, I mean the whole industry that you decided to get into uh, certainly when you got into it was was quite cultish if you will it was like i'm sure when you you started what when what year did you say you opened up your first shop oh yeah we were in the early 90s and we first opened up Chester's Court. It was seven of us, I believe, in the yellow pages. So now there's 17 <laughs> tattoo shops on my street. So we've definitely <laughs> grown as an industry, that's for sure. It's nice to see fresh influences. It's nice to see like a, a new take on old designs and a lot of new artists popping up in the whole horror industry. 
really awesome to see. Yeah, but but do you find that that, that do you find that you have that same sort of um, camaraderie amongst? I don't know. Is it is it even amongst other tattoo artists? Is, oh, for sure. It, we, we definitely like to sit around and have a beer and bitch about how rough we have it as tattoo artists. <laughs> our, our worst days are probably better than most people's best days. So <laughs> for sure. Yeah. What are your two, te- what are your two shops names? Because uh, like some- they're both Jester Sport <laughs> tattoos. We have one in Etna and one here in Southside. I'm in uh, my little private office back here in Southside right now. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah, seriously. Next time I'm up there, I, I probably will stop in. I, I've got some <laughs> space left, so. Uh, <laughs> not too much space left. Well, so, Sean will hook you up. Yeah, I, 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 unfortunately, after all of that work, you know, it, it's really funny also when you're, um, like, when I was trying to organize the, the festival, it, all that you could think about was, other things to think about you know how do you how do you keep the ball rolling how do you not stagnate you know how do you uh uh i don't know how how do you keep it fresh just like you're saying you know you get around you get hang around with other tattoo artists and talk about how you can make something that's age old better you know um I, i think that's uh, that's always been the mantra for for uh, this whole mission with, you know, Night of the Living Dead. You know, when when Jim and I came back onto the scene, uh, well, probably I guess we started really started in like 2009. Um, you know, to start saying, wait a minute, there's there's something bigger here. You know, there's something more than, you know, just a festival in Evan City. <clears throat> The, the amount of the, the choices are unlimited, you know, but you only have so much time, <laughs> you know, to, to, yeah. to do any, anything, any, any, uh, you know, sort of one idea. So you have to pick the, the, the idea that's going to carry the heaviest. And, and so anyway, I was constantly thinking of things and that's how, you know, tats, you know, I thought, wow, this is a perfect audience. This is the perfect place. We'll have a tattoo artist at the Living Dead Fest, and and he'll have lines around the block. And unfortunately, I think you did two two tattoos. Oh yeah, <laughs> I wasn't cooperating, but we had a blast. Toon Brian, <laughs> crazy characters of all the original cast. I mean, it was it was it was definitely fun. I mean, we were there. <laughs> it was hot as hell. I remember did, that. But- it, it was it was like 90 degrees it was i remember it being significantly hot but anyway so so the point was is yes it didn't necessarily work as a a vehicle to um, you know either bring in money for you or uh, or probably even much uh, you know promotion to the living dead fest but it it did because it still carries on it still carries on in memories and it still carries on in you know, and I think that's why we're here tonight is um, it, these are episodes in our life, you know, that uh, you're not going to repeat them and, and you're, it's going to be hard to top them. You know, that that was finally like in 2001. I think it was 14. I'm really bad with chronology. Uh, but the year we had George up to do the you know, yeah. the, 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 the big good. deal. Yeah. Um, I think that was 13 or 14. It was 14, remember. Right. It, it, was, 14. it was 14. That was amazing. You know, looking at file names in my head and my, uh, in my, <laughs> that was, and that's, that's where we've got that footage. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> but man, get, I tell you what, meeting George was one of the, I, I was just a little kid. I was just a little kid. You, you know what I mean? Because I mean, he, she's always short. Well, yes, uh, I'm a man, you know. <laughs> But no, I'm, oh, he, it was just so amazing because he had influenced my, who I am as a person. And it wasn't even Night of the Living Dead that did it. And I told him so. I was like, you know what did it? Monsters. The, the anthology show Monsters. It's like the, the, I, the anthology shows are the things that got me. You know, because I grew up watching like the Twilight Zone with my dad and stuff, Rod Serling and Night Gallery and stuff like that. So 
I, you know, just watching the anthology shows that he was that George was involved with. That's what got me. And then <clears> I found <throat> Night of the Living Dead later and loved it. You know, but it just meeting George was just, oh, yes, I was I was a total like five year old inside when I met him. <laughs> she was. She was all gushy and ooey gooey. Oh, I was just so excited. <laughs> total fangirl. <laughs> Which is unusual for her because she's fairly jaded, as most of us in the entertainment industry are, famous people, <laughs> whatever. We're all human beings, <laughs> yeah. but when you meet somebody that has really influenced you as a human being, you know, like what, what you pursue in, in life because this person inspired you to do so. You know, he inspired me to love horror. He inspired me to get into special effects makeup. He inspired me to make creepy dollies. He inspired me to want to shoot horror movies or videos or whatever, you know, and to meet someone who influences you as a human being is just, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. It goes beyond them being a famous person or anything like that. It's just like, oh my gosh, you are totally just an awesome human. You're pursuing <laughs> the kind of thing that I want to, to see as a viable thing to go. Hey, William. Hi. What's going on, brother? Sorry, responding to the comment. <laughs> yes. It's so awesome to hear stories <laughs> like that, too, how, like, I just took it for such, for granted, seeing Romero and Savini, like, every week, working at Ives, just being in Pittsburgh, yeah. bouncing through different situations, and to hear the enthusiasm, how he influenced, and how they both influenced people in horror mm -hmm. and the art world is awesome. Yes. Amazing, amazing to have a legacy like that, you know. Just and, and he had that it, he had that glimmer in his eye, you know. You could see the sparkle in his eye. He was he was a kid. I mean, he was he, well, that, man, but he was a kid. That that that's what I was gonna say. So you know, you live your life of this Romero image, um, and then you meet him, and he's just a regular guy. You know, um, he's he, he's he's probably as nervous about meeting you or was as nervous about meeting you as you were meeting him. Um, and, and it's nice. Again, it's um, I'll think of a better way to put this as an analogy. But it's once again, it's like <clears throat> those barriers all came down. You know, it was just humans with humans. Yeah. And nobody, yeah. nobody yeah. had rank. Nobody had seniority. Yeah. Uh, we did well, of course. George did only because of his accomplishments, but you know, but it didn't matter. It wasn't imposed upon you. You know, uh, yeah. it wasn't expected. We definitely made it fun to, to work on projects for sure. Very well. Yeah. I mean that that's the thing I think that that I noticed the most about the Living Dead Festival when we were out there is that it had very much that feel. Family. It was, it was just a bunch of people. Family. Hanging. From the day one. Yeah. yeah. Shared a similar love of, of a similar ideas and art forms. And it, there was there were stars there, but you never felt like you were talking to a star. No, not You once. felt like you were talking to somebody who was just cool and shared yeah. your interests. And I think that's well, none of them, none of, none of them perceived themselves as stars. I'll no. never forget, you know, because I went away, um, you know, um, I had, a, I, I, I left Pittsburgh and, you know, had another career and, and, um, and, and my brother and John Russo kind of carried the torch for all those years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I came back and, uh, and, and the whole thing happened, it, w it was quite, simple i retired i think for like that was actually i retired for the first time i think i've retired about 12 times after that You're like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i didn't know what i was gonna do i was hanging around evan city and one day the phone rang, you know, and it was Rick Reifenstein. And he said, hey, I'm Rick Reifenstein. Well, I knew who Rick Reifenstein was because I knew him from WRS Motion Picture Labs. But he said, hey, I'm, I'm uh, on the board of the, the Historical Society. And this is the 40th year uh, <clears throat> of, of Night of the Living Dead. We should do something. You know, and I said, oh, OK, sure. You know, and you hear that all the time. Everybody wants to do something, but they do they really want to do anything or do they want me to do something? 
So, um, so I, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. I, it did trickle my trip, my mind to just say, wow, it is rather odd, uh, that this little town sits up here. And one of the main things it, it, it you know, uh, you know, it has to tout is, uh, the fact that Night of the Living Dead was shot here. And, and so I, you know, I was just kicking around thinking about it. Still remember I was trying to retire. Um, and I guess about a month went by or six weeks went by and I get another call from Rick and he goes, man, if we're going to do anything, we've got to do it. And that was it. And <clears throat> we just jumped into this thing. We, we overdid it. You know, we, we designed, we had, you know, reenactments up in the cemetery casting sessions. I mean, we, we had this, this whole litany of things and we got to about August and we go, who's going to pay for all this, <laughs> you know, and we, there was nobody. We really had no money. And I just said, that's it. We will, that's it. We'll just have a screening in Edco park. And that, that was in, in 2008. And, you know, there was probably, I don't even know. I, 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 it keeps bouncing around in my head, but I think there were about 200 people that made it to that screening, which is phenomenal because I don't even know how at that point in time, uh, they even knew that it was happening. We didn't, we didn't have Facebook. Uh, but there was one key thing. There was a, there was a, uh, you know, a fifties, uh, year old doctor that came up to me and introduced himself to me. And, and uh, it just said, uh, I, my, my most sincere thanks for putting on this screening. He said, uh, and, he's, and then he introduced me to, my, to his son, who was about 15. And he said, I've been waiting for the right opportunity to share Night of the Living Dead with my son. And it just, I mean, that stuff just tears at you you know it's just like wow i never thought and how many how many people have have come up to me and said you know you you your film changed my life and and yes. and you know in the, in the beginning you know i'm just saying oh, yeah right you know it's like come on how did night of the living dead change your life and then i started hearing the stories I mean, there we could do a documentary, no question, uh, just interviewing people who were influenced by Night of the Living Dead oh, yeah. uh, and, and how it did truly change their life. Not spiritually, it changed their life, you know, not, uh, you know, not worldly, but spiritually. Maybe made them think. I had a balloon all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that, yeah, that took a long time for me to get used to that. Just, you know, like the things that you were saying a few minutes ago, Tricia, just well, how you were going off on what it meant to you and, and meeting George and how, what, what, what that meant to you. There's thousands of those stories and they're all so cool. Um, I mean, we it, have to go, go ahead. ahead. No, I, I, was, I was just going to say, you know, and it, but it also spawned people looking to to try to give their own take on that movie. I mean, Sean was in the, the 1990s version, the remake. Right. I mean, that's it, right, Sean. I forgot to mention whole, in th that in your intro. This is a whole <laughs> other like generation of people that are going. That was so good. I just got to get my feet in that. And that's amazing. That's amazing. How many movies? And have still, to, to this, some of those groups and listening in the comments, it's wild. Listening to like <laughs> international fans of that, even like the remake, and just running into people from that. Uh, right, influence is definitely there. It's it's fun to be from Pittsburgh and hear that here, still today. Yeah. Like what, yeah. what, what years what later were you in, Sean, specifically in in the remake? What uh, did you? What was your zombie, I have a nice meat hook in my bag. I get drugged down the hill to the body pile. Thrown on the fire, get a little pat on the back. Who's probably wait a minute? You were another one for the fire. Yep, and uh, uh, yes, he was all messed up. He was all messed up. Long day. Long day on the fire. 
Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that's why I, wish I had actually gotten into the film industry up in Pittsburgh, because I probably would have lucked into projects like that and sent us some of the goofy lifetime shit I was gripping on. <laughs> It was fun. Uh, like I said, uh, super welcoming. Uh, I thought all movie sets would be like that. You know, going from Two Evil Eyes and Night of Living Dead, I thought everything was going to be dreamy, sitting back in the <laughs> coffee tent. Yeah, not no, always. Sure. A lot of hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. yeah. You run you, across you, those and you take them when you get them, but ninety-nine percent of the time, that ain't the vibe, brother. <laughs> Yeah, you've seen uh, having. I don't mean. Uh, I can't imagine how many productions there actually have been uh, that have been done in Pittsburgh, and you've you've worked on forty of them, uh, or so. Uh, it, it that it, well, it's just interesting too because it takes a certain personality uh, to just be able to do that. And of course, you you weren't living off of that. You made. I'm sure you made some money off of it. But you weren't living off of it, so you had to have a, you know, a, 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 another career to do. But to be, and fortunately, you know, you you did have a career that if you needed to take some time off to to uh, do a role, you could. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, to me, this is these are the 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 really critical things uh, uh, about life. Um, that we we just take for granted and we forget about them and, and it was truly was the impetus for wanting to do this show just to be able to reminisce this stuff and talk about this stuff trisha and gordon the first the first time we met was was at a screening at the strand theater yep. um and I, and we're gonna I, I don't know jim if tell me if i'm crazy but I, I think it's. I think we need to. I think we need to run uh, the piece where we're going to run at the end. Yeah, <laughs> he's, got it, he's got it. He's standing by with it. Okay, so let me set it up. So, so all of a sudden, uh, here we're at the Strand Theater in Zelian Opal, PA. People can't even yeah. say their <laughs> name, <laughs> and uh, and and we decide we're going to have a fundraiser screening. And we had people from all th these guys came from from Virginia, you know. Uh, Dean came from Michigan, yes. you know. <clears throat> and 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 I'm I'm standing outside watching it. I had another event. <clears throat> I had been up in uh, Franklin, PA, at a at a zombie walk mm -hmm. prior prior to the screening, and once again, just beat absolutely beat. Yeah, I was were. so tired to just finally get down to this thing. And out. then I get there and I see, I see all these people talking to one another, like they were high school friends, you know, that they, they, it, there were no barriers. It just was, Oh, you're here for the night of the living dead event. You're my friend, open arms. And, uh, and that was you. I remember you, Trisha, were talking to Dean <laughs> like you had known him since high school, He's and so that was the first time. Easy to talk to. <laughs> What's like that? Him. Dean is easy to talk to. He's an awesome dude. Yeah, well, that's true. Dean is easy to talk to. Hey, you Jim. Wear a vest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. If you're wearing a fez, you're my friend. I don't have to. <laughs> I mean, we, we typically travel with a cheese fez, so you know. <laughs> I mean, I got pictures of him. We have pictures of him with that. I, I, I have been known to wear that cheese you fez. Have <laughs> Again, I well, got okay. Let, let let's <laughs> run this thing because I think it's absolutely hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gary Striner, out in front of the lovely Strand Theater in downtown Zimbabwe, Pennsylvania, and dropping off one of his zombie friends here, getting ready for the big show. And uh, I guess, well, I guess he's deciding to just fly down the street backwards with no concern whatsoever for anyone's life. 25 points, pedestrians. Go right ahead, Gary. You own this town of 25 people. I'm coming through, everybody. Move it or lose it. <laughs> Look at this woman's like, I'm not even looking at him. He's so disgusting driving backwards down the street so quickly. Ugh. 
This woman's obviously a little bit nervous. She's going to go inside, hoping she doesn't get run over. Uh, who knows if he's going to jump up on the sidewalk and just start plowing pedestrians. So he's finally, I guess, parking down there somewhere. It looks like he's trying to find a nice, cozy spot for his Toyota Tacoma. Now, let's take a look here as to what is he doing back there? Where is he? Oh, my gosh. What is he? Have vodka in his car? Is he keeping his glove box? Oh, Gary. Where is my Gary? Gary don't care. Gary don't give a shit. Look at him. He's just getting out of his car. Okay, so now he's moseying because we know Gary is a moseyer. He likes to mosey, you know, especially on weekends when there's an important event taking place. He's kind of, you know, he looks kind of drunk or something. Something's not right. I mean, rubbing his eyes, did he just wake up? The least he could have done was dress up like a zombie for the affair. Would have been nice, uh, since everyone else did. <laughs> Way to go, Gary. He's kind of staggering. It's kind of scary. So now he's kind of continuing to mosey. I mean, I, under I understand Romero's zombies are supposed to be slow, but Gary, jeez. People are waiting. Oh, and here's two kids who have no clue who Gary Steiner is. Oh, he's that guy who was out in the street running people over, wreaking havoc. Oh, here he is. His drunk ass finally made it to, to Trisha and Gore. Yeah, I'm, I'm Gary Steiner. Sure, I just stumbled down the street. I, why? I, where is the strand? Is this? A, I, can you point me in the right direction? I was wondering. Did you? Do you like zombies? Uh, I don't even get me started. I, I don't know where. I was wondering if you could do me a huge favor. I work LMA. Can you point me where? Do you know Kyra? Can you get Kyra Sean? She's here somewhere. I just need some help. I was wondering. Do you like vodka? I just don't know what I. Can you? I hold on. I'll be. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Just. Just a second. Gary Striner, everybody is so cute. <laughs> that never <laughs> ceases to be funny. Ryan has <laughs> that. Ryan absolutely killed that. My cheekers are... <laughs> And, and gave, Trisha, you told me that, that, that he recorded that in his car in the parking lot at work before he went into work. Went into work. work. <laughs> that out his car, and we sent him the footage, and he was like, all right, I'll send you back an audio file. And we're like, you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, gonna, that's it. We're done. One take, brother. <laughs> He's so good. I want to live in that world. I want to live in that world constantly. Sorry, we, we did blow our... our wrap up but i think it was it it, it was important to have a, <laughs> a a little a little jolt so um oh it makes me laugh every time i watch it <laughs> i i was sitting here by myself in the cemetery laughing my ass off um <laughs> is there any anything um Anybody wants to say any? Are there any questions, Jim? By any chance? Uh, I'm not <laughs> seeing any in the comments. All right. Picture page is picture page. Not in the private chat. Oh, well, that was William. Oh, that was yeah, William. That's cool, William. That's I mean, William. That's an old one. Okay, oh. we can answer that one about three or four more times. I wonder. Somebody you know. says. Um, that was a while ago. I'd love if you would all tell your favorite Romero story. I think Trish already did that. Oh well, yeah, meeting um, him was my favorite Romero story. My my <laughs> favorite Romero story was, um, well, I, I'm I'm not going to qualify it as my favorite, but it's certainly a Romero story. Um, we we worked insane hours in the early days of Late Image, and and we'd have full, you know, commercial shoots. Uh, during the day, uh, one day, and then all of a sudden, you know, it comes around six o'clock or seven o'clock and we have to, George and I have to pile in a, a van and, and drive to uh, Hawk Mountain in Pennsylvania to, to, to film these people that uh, there's a certain time of year when the migration of these hawks come in this certain every year they come through this certain valley 
in Pennsylvania. And, and so all these hawk freaks get out they're They're sitting out there with, with these high powered binoculars. And there's like on the horizon, there are three peaks. You can see three peaks and all of a sudden, you know, somebody will say two over three and, <laughs> and all, all the, all the, uh, the binoculars go over and, and, and now all of a sudden they can, these binoculars are so powerful. They can tell the sex of the bird. They can tell the age of the bird. Anyway, George and I have to drive across Pennsylvania to get to this thing. And so he says, all right, before we get on the road, you know, go around to market street and I, I want to stop at the market and get some stuff before we go. So, you know, sure, George, whatever. And, uh, you know, so he goes into this, uh, little shop and he does his does his grocery stuff and uh can, hello go go oh, go i'm sorry go. I'm Trish was about oh, to oh, okay oh i, I thought said, I, I just i thought maybe something had happened um so so anyway george comes back with this bag full of stuff and we start driving across the pennsylvania turnpike and, you know, we're uh, probably at least been up for 16 hours, you know, if not more. And who, who knows how many hours of sleep I got, um, you know, but that but that's it did matter. That's just what you did. You always found the energy somehow. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm I'm going, George, man, we got we got another 200 miles to go. And I'm I'm really shaking. I'm driving. And um, he goes, oh, here. And he reaches, goes, reaches in the back seat and he goes through this bag that he brought in uh, from the grocery store. And he, and he pulls out this jar of hot peppers. And <laughs> I'm going, what? You know, now he's Cuban, so I can understand it. You know, he, 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 you know but um, what, what's going on here? And he said, here, just eat one of these and you'll be great for, uh, you know, another hour. And, and. So George and I are here. George and I are driving across the Pennsylvania Turnpike eating peppers. Uh, we didn't, we didn't, and and they would, man. I mean, you'd eat one of these peppers, and your eyes would forget it. They were like bold face there, out open. And it was just funny that they your were five doing. hour energy. Give me some peppers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know. And that's, I mean, we were that naive too. It wasn't, the, you know, other synthetic drugs did not enter into the, the picture at all. It was like, eat a fucking pepper, you know, hey, man. <laughs> getting tired, eat a pepper. <laughs> Meanwhile, I can't imagine what it was doing to my stomach. And we oh, made wow. it, we made it to, to, to <laughs> we made it to our location and I and, and it, it, it was one of those ridiculous things where, you know, I had to set my alarm for 45 minutes. <laughs> you know, that's what we were going to get. We we're going to get 45 minutes sleep. And then we have to crawl to the top, carry all the equipment to the top of, of Hawk Mountain. Uh, but you, you did things like that with George and they were fun. You know, they weren't laborsome. They weren't, uh, you know. I don't know. They, they, they just weren't work. Somehow he had a, 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 an incredible ability to make most everything fun. Sean, you must have one or two Romero stories. I don't know. I got spoiled right off the bat. I didn't realize there was like different tents for different talent of movies. And I just remember George walking in on me and Harvey Keitel drinking entirely too much wine during uh, Two Evil Eyes <laughs> and uh, trying to explain an impalement scene. And I was thinking I was hearing the entire thing wrong, but uh, I guess I wasn't hearing it wrong at all. <laughs> yeah, just really friendly, down to earth, accommodating. I didn't feel like awkward at all was the first thing I had wor ever worked on and I mean he's walking around making sure everybody's having fun everybody's taken care of it, it was good it was a it was a, an overnight shoot also everybody was definitely getting a little cranky with the whole maypole dancing and everything but it, it worked <laughs> out in the long run well I think that I think that's um and and you know <clears throat> again like I said uh, that that was that was just one incident that popped into my head of 
of 11 years uh, I worked with George, you know, 11 years of, of just nonstop work, you know, hard work. Well, it was either that. It was it, 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 like most independent filmmakers. It was either feast or famine. You know, you were <clears throat> you were either working till your uh, you know fingers were bloody or 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 you just or your ass was bloody because you were sitting on it so much you know <laughs> or the peppers <laughs> apple box yeah <laughs> <laughs> apple box please come on <laughs> but that's what but, but then but that was the other side of george then he would invent these games you know he had these games and we'd we'd just play um one was floor war and he would he would get these you know little toy soldiers a little like one inch toy soldiers and we had a big conference room and we were all i mean like george was elated because we uh finally got to uh get our conference room which it was a pretty big room we got to get it carp recarpeted and and so the floor was like perfectly flat and so what you would get on one side of the room and your opponent would get on the other side of the room and you'd set up all your little soldiers and then you'd roll marbles across the floor to try to knock down the other other guys soldiers. And uh, we, uh, there was a funny story with that, too, because. <clears throat> one weekend George just said, I, I got to get out of here. I just I have to get out of here. And, and there's a hotel out in uh, Oakland. I don't. I'm not sure it's still there. The Westminster hotel. I don't know if it's still there or not, but it was like a very small private semi high end hotel. And George decided that we were, we were going to go and get a room in this hotel so that we could play floor war. And, uh, and that's all we did. We got room service and we ate, and we sat there the whole night and we played floor war <laughs> and uh and we we wrote a check for uh you know to pay for the room and the food and everything and we took a we took the latent image bank balance down to like eleven dollars and seventeen cents <laughs> <laughs> And Russ was not very happy about that. <laughs> and probably he wasn't too happy about that because he didn't get to come. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I'll get you next time, Johnny. We'll get you next time. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, a lot of... Uh... A lot of good times, a lot of, I think, I, well, I guess my point was, I think that, I think that, um, again, it's hard, hard to kind of phrase some of these things that are in my head that, you know, George never made a huge amount of money off of movies ever, right? Uh, but the amount of wealth that he spread you know, through, through that body of work is, is just astronomical and knowing, I mean, you guys saw him uh, even at, you know, uh, you know, when he came up to Evan city, uh, you know, he wouldn't have left there. There was a line out, out line the door, pretty, up around yeah, uh, yeah. huge, huge line. Um, uh, to just uh, he wasn't signing, he was just taking pictures, but he, wasn't, but he, and, he was not going to get up until he had no, and, and, and also he made sure that he talked, yeah, to every it, single person. It, it wasn't, wasn't just post for a picture, it wasn't a picture. cattle call, it was uh -uh. let me, he would not let people leave. He's like, something. No, you're not leaving until you tell me something, something. you know, something he just about wanted to have yourself. that little connection, and that's he was amazing, man. He was just amazing. That has a big impact on the people that you keep around you. I mean. It does. For people that you just meet briefly like that, that has a massive impact. But for people like you, 11 years in the trenches yeah. with the man, it's right. that sort of that that sort of kind of camaraderie, I guess. That sort of he he cares. He's invested in you as a person, not just as a a piece on the table. A pawn or you something. Know, yeah. That well, that it, exactly the sort of thing you're talking about. Those long, thankless hours. All of a sudden, they're not so thankless anymore. Oh, you know? oh right. It, it, it yeah, 
really but but we we've, we've all also worked those long hours with a director who couldn't give a shit less about you and yeah, the think. resentment and the anger and you get th- <laughs> you get much tighter much quicker you know there's no rallying because all of a sudden he's just decided he wants to completely change the angle and yeah. he's got to relight you know uh and george maybe it takes me a little longer at crafty this time to get back to set i don't know <laughs> I'm just saying, well, maybe I can't well for, for those who had crafty true <laughs> for those that even have had a decent crafty not just a couple of stale slices of bread and some bologna but jumbo you know, sandwich hey we lived on jumbo sandwiches from isley's <laughs> Right. The x-rated language comes in even though it's not that's just a piece of grip gear it's nothing bad <laughs> well anyway i mean we we could go on part of what you know is really hard because um and trish and gore well, I'm, i've never even had this conversation with you but um you just know the you know and sean too i i i i I kind of forget how you've been sort of just quietly in the background of, of all and not necessarily even quietly, quietly to me, you know, you, you, I think you were pretty loudly out in the, in the Pittsburgh community, uh, certainly more than me, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, after I came back and so on and so forth. But um, I, after the, after the, the chapel got saved after we did that weekend with George. Um, I just burn out, you know, I mean, I just, it, uh, I, I just burnt out and, and I, 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 you know, I walked away that very night and I just said, mm, how am I going to top this one? You know, how the hell do you top, you know, George Romero <clears throat> dedicating this chapel that people donated all their money uh, to make happen and that's when I decided to turn it o- over to Kevin, and, and because I I knew I knew that I was getting bored with with what was happening, and I knew that I had to make it more more fun and more interactive, and 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 I but I didn't have the energy to do that. So, um, but and 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 then that's it. Then the the whole group kind of just started to dissipate which is which is completely understandable because there was no mission there was you know there was there would be post there and um but but there wasn't the energy was gone the energy had left the building um and and i always felt kind of sad about that and i felt a little guilty about it that I didn't have enough energy at least to keep the group going. Um, but I, but I guess that's where I'm, I am with things now, you know, things have lots of things have changed, um, over the last years with the, with image 10 and, you know, we're, we're starting to get paid for things that, you know, we're supposed to get paid for. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really actually, the whole marketing merchandise end of Night of Living Dead has never been better, um, <clears throat> but 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 that essence is gone, and and I kind of wanted. I was hoping maybe to uh, just to, to look for a hook, you know, for a, a hook to get the group back together again or people back together again. It will never it will never be the same. But I was kind of hoping that Night Talk could be the impetus to that, you know, and that um, it, it, it would be a place that, you know, we, we did a thing, Sean, I don't I don't know if you remembered it, but uh, Trish and Gore, I, we talked about it. I know you remembered it. Um, the, the whole thing is, 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 you know, when you're running a 5,000 person Facebook group, you better have some daily information, you know, because if you don't, they're just going to, they're just going to go somewhere else. It's, it's that easy. And I saw that there was this point between when we raised the money and we actually started construction 
that there wasn't a whole hell of a lot to say, you know, and and that's when we did Artist of the Week, yep. yes. and, uh, and 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 so every week. Uh, and uh, another artist that was in the group would get to show their wares for that whole week. And uh, I think we had 28 people sign up for it. And, uh, you know, that's 28 weeks of you'd think, oh, my God, how boring. (laughs) And it never got boring. No, it never did. It's like, what? You're an artist? Oh, oh, that's, that's cool. What and, do you do? There's this like, amazing stuff that I'm seeing for the first time. Like John ever. Williams. John Williams doing his skateboard decks. You yes. know, I mean, that's not yeah. something not every day. Yeah. And then but, we have. Right. But you're right. It, it's, it, and... I don't think it'll ever get quite back to the height of the Save the Chapel urgency. But that that is still definitely something that is going to be. Um, engaging to people i mean especially to to other even if you're not another artist but if you are another artist and you're out there looking to see what other people are doing that's that's just especially appealing because you can throw your stuff out there and get some feedback and it's it's things like that that yeah will definitely you're right it will never hit that height again in that exact same way that's not to say you can't get back to kind of that level of participation. It's just going to have to be approached from a different angle. And you know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not going to be. A, it, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. What were you saying something, Sean? No, I mean, I just know what it feels like to finish up a film project and then just going to bounce into the next one, reinvent the whole situation. But I mean, Night of the Living Dead's going to keep on influencing things as long as we're going to be around. That's certainly for sure. Yeah. Well, that that's another scary thing for me is is like, uh, you know, what 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 happens? You know, it's amazing when you look at any one of those, um, you know, group photographs on the stairs of the of the chapel um, with all the, the living dead guests. And you start to realize half of them are gone, you know, and that's just within the time of and that's what i kind of kept saying in the in the very beginning from when i first started i kept saying people you know you are so lucky right now because you've got all of these people that are alive and still come to shows and you can still meet them but there's going to come a point in time when there are those people are no longer there you know it's heartbreaking the people that just the you know the dead movies have lost in the last few years is I'm sorry I'm thinking about John I'm thinking about John yeah just such beautiful each one of them were such jewels that's the that's the bottom line John Kirsch was he was just an amazing man no he question was, about it I'm sorry yeah you guys that. got to be you got <laughs> I'm sorry about that Trish um you guys got to know him really well. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but anyway, yeah, no, but, it, but, you know, how, how bad did I feel when Richard Ritchie died? He was one of my best friends, right. you know, and it, it's just all of a sudden this energy is just, it's just like a, you know, a flash going off and that's it. That energy is no longer there. Anyway, to some extent, that energy is no longer there, but that's not, I mean, that's not entirely true because uh, this goes back to what we were talking about before. It's sometimes hard for you to get, or at least in the beginning, how much of an impact this has had on people. And it's true. It has. And that's going to carry on long after every one of us that is sitting here today, there's already people bringing their kids to see this. Oh, yeah. a whole new generations to this. I feel I mean, yeah. we've got whole new generations of people redoing the movie. I mean, we've got pictures of Sean in his role, which I mean, wouldn't be bad to throw up because that is showing the... Well, this was is, actually, he you know, just <laughs> telling the story. Good. These were, he, 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 he did those photographs that you, you that flash. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, these things. Yes. They, they weren't for a movie. He did that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> those were for true. those were for family photos. Those are so which awesome. Is, which I is love brilliant. It. I love it. But tell me that's not the energy moving forward. 
tell me that's not that. <laughs> it is. Come it's on. so amazing. I love it so much. This I energy mean, <laughs> does not exist without Night of the Living Dead. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Right? <laughs> I love they it. are pretty good, Sean. I have yeah, to say, Ash definitely killed it on those. Those, are, those yes. are great. Did she do the makeup? No, uh, that was a little surprise. Uh, real quick, I uh, ducked out for a second, hit the bathroom, and came back out. So <laughs> that, that was a little little quickie there, just just for the camera, <laughs> for you, man. I told you I'd send you some good flicks. All those snapshots we had, like behind the scenes from Night of Living Dead. I mean, that was before any kind of camera phones. We didn't have anything to record with. Luckily, right. a couple people. I think even Aaron snapped a couple shots. I can only know maybe Bucciarelli. I'm trying to think of who the heck would even gave me those snapshots back then. And luckily, I was smart enough to throw them in a photo album, so I still have them somewhere for Pete's sake. Just snap and throw. Yeah, up. yeah. These Night of Living Dead it, it, online are wild. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's true. I, there are so many. E even well, <clears throat> then there, there there's uh, you know two scenarios. The one scenario is 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 that <clears throat> you know you just didn't have the ability to take photographs uh, b before, and then you get into the Living Dead Fest where these two came, and God only knows they've taken. 5,000 pictures over the years, you know, th then it's editing them and trying to even find out what's in inside all of them. You know, <clears throat> I think, I do think that that's something um, that, that has to be a project or pr those have to be projects that are put on the burner and made to happen. Uh, yeah. th th we have the complete George Romero dedication. Yes. Um, uh, so you know funny. that that has to be made into a DVD that's made available. Uh, we have, I mean, how many miles of interview footage? Yeah, with, with um, not cast and crew, but we've got interview footage with some of the original members of the group back when it was just really getting rolling John to save Bean, the chapel. Mom, Dick Hedger, yeah, well, um, just members of the Facebook group. Oh I mean, yeah, just, Josh just, Dove. Yeah, just uh, yeah. the people who were there because. They wanted to be a part of saving this. A this lot of icon, people. A lot you know? of people. So we've got footage of, of ranging from the the fans through, you know, people who worked on the film, people who were in the film. We've yeah. got yeah. We've got footage of you guys of the screenings of of Mama Striner at the just, Strand. Right, right, right. Uh, just that was, yeah. that was such a, a wealth of footage, man, that we could make into something beautiful. We yeah. could make it into something beautiful. We will make it into something beautiful. That's, that's, that's right. That's Not the right attitude. <laughs> we will. Correct. Yeah, that's no, right. we have to. Otherwise, nobody else is going to do it. And, and you know, that, that that's a, uh, these are little nuggets yeah. that can go into the time capsule, you know. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and people can say, oh, this is when that happened. Oh, wow, yeah. that's really cool. So that we don't get into the same situation. You know, there are so many photographs. Funny, there were quite a few photographs taken, really, uh, you know, uh, because Carl was a uh, Hardman was a photographer. And so he shot a ton of stuff. And when Heinzman was out there, you know, he shot a bunch of stuff. And and uh, Reed Servinsky shot a, a, a bunch of snapshots. So we're lucky that we do have a lot of photographs. Um, but but it, it, it's the same thing that 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 whole library needs to get to be more accessible and, and, and to be uh, shared. And we're, we're finding that we're still, yeah. it continues to go on. We've, we've obviously when uh, Marilyn Eastman passed, um, <clears throat> she did have, um, you know, a, a quite a, she, she had everything that was left of what Carl shot. Right. So right. we have a whole new battery of, photographs that we have to go through we have coffee table books that that are halfway two-thirds of the way done that have to get finished right, right. <clears throat> so yeah it's all you know i guess that's just it you just have to keep chipping at it you know i, I don't think there's any easy answer um i i just i i feel you know that's the other thing you know i looked i was just on facebook yesterday looking at people who were commenting on something that I posted, 
I don't even know half of the people that are in the Facebook, uh, you know, in our Facebook group anymore. You know, they're all new. And like you're saying, <clears throat> Gore, you know, it keeps going on. So these, <clears throat> a lot of the old, uh, old, uh, timers that, that, that helped us get the thing underway, they dabble, they're here and there, you know, but now it's the new kids that are, that are keeping things alive. Um, so, and they've never seen any of this footage, you know, they've never been, they were never to a living dead fest, you know? Right. Uh, um, <clears throat> so anyway, I, 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 we, we have to figure out a way it's, that's all it is. We have to figure out a way. We've got a photo from the Chiller Theater show on standby. We want to take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Judy, Kyra, my Uncle Gary, my Uncle Russ, and Paula. (laughs) (laughs) That's That's a great picture. That really is. That's my favorite. Um, And and there again, that event, that event was unbelievable in uh, uh, Chiller in New Jersey. Uh, it was, and, and people came to us and said, you know, the night of the living dead room is the busiest room in the show. Nice. And, nice. and, you know, I mean, you got all these stars and celebrities, <laughs> you know, and they say yours was the busiest room, awesome. you know, at, at the show. It, it sometimes is just hard to take, you know, it's hard to believe. You know, and that that's the other thing, you know, that's that's why, um, you know, uh, the people that made Night of the Living Dead and the people that were in Night of the Living Dead uh, were were some had celebrity, you know, obviously, you know, Bill Cardill had, uh, uh, you know, he had celebrity. And so did Dave James. Dave James was a, a, you know, pretty big name celebrity and news in Pittsburgh. Um, but they weren't national celebrities. They were local celebrities. And, and, uh, and so they didn't have airs about them. You know, they were just normal Pittsburgh people. I mean, Paula Richards, who, who was in that photograph that Jim just put up, you know, Ella Mae Smith, you know, I need to get some pancakes from her. Her and Miss Paula. I love to get some pancakes from LMA. They are the best of friends. Every time they're at a festival, they are at the same table. Oh, yeah. No matter yes. what. Oh, yeah. And yes, you better we not have come to the- <laughs> no. no, that's a that's a bad move. <laughs> that's the sweetest thing ever. I love seeing them together. It just makes my heart happy. Yes. They're, they're yeah, they're, there's a brotherhood there, a sisterhood. Um, anyway, I guess we're getting close here to, to, uh, quitting time. Is there anything that I can not, can you believe we've been talking for an hour and a half? Um, yeah. I've been enjoying watching it get dark in the background with you. I'm waiting for that light to come up. The little red eyes to come walking <laughs> past you, or whatever, whatever's going on in that cemetery, bro. <laughs> oh, they're there's just people up here bicycling. Stuff. You know, there, there, there's activity here at the cemetery <laughs> for sure. And you with that light on in the car by yourself. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, I can you believe it? I am being lit by a couple of lights on my dashboard. You look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Oh, good. Man, it's like probably is, it's probably <laughs> is a better better than that. But um, but anyway, any anything, anything, anything. Yes. Yeah, so okay, let's let's talk. Sean, I can't. You know, I, I know damn well if kevin christ would have known that you had that part in you would have been invited to come to living dead weekend uh, it's dude there's so many events that the whole night of the living dead community i mean there's no way you could go to everything it's, it's awesome oh, <laughs> there's absolutely no way just trying to play catch up online and like look at some more newer relevant things so i'd have some things to talk about for this show i was blown away Fans, <laughs> cemetery, probably walking behind your car right now. 
<laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Gary checks his mirror. <laughs> now I'm starting to. Right? What do you mean? What are you talking about? What's going on? Control of the show award. <laughs> <laughs> well, we the nice Irish spelling of the, the name shot. We have Irish heritage too. <laughs> As my mom, she had a crush on Sean Connery. I get no credit. Ah. <laughs> Hey, McCarthy, though, is that Scottish? Uh, I know. Irish, Irish. Yeah. Uh, John Patrick Paul Michael McCarthy. Well, there you go. <laughs> right on. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, okay, so so we are all going to be, uh, well, not all of us, me. I'm the only one, I guess, that's going to be uh, out in Monroeville this weekend. Uh, I, I have no reason to be car. there. Uh, <laughs> Just drive backwards in your Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> we'll jump in the back as you go by. You don't have to stop. It's only like <laughs> 13 hours. You It'll know, be fine. It's It'll be cool. Fine. We'll stop by Sports and Spirits, get some everything wings. We'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Without further ado, I guess it's a done deal. I really thank you, you three, for uh, Sean in particular. I take it for granted with with Gore and 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 uh, Katie there. Uh, oh, that's what? another thing. It's just a shame because then the second thing, something that we forgot to talk about, and we and that was a mistake. We did have room for it because uh, we could now be going out. Uh, on a, or, a, a, cor a corpse of cock news these guys did an animated thing they did a show called how many episodes you did like 10 episodes oh, or, 10, or 11, 10 or 11 something like that we went from just using nothing but like stills to digitizing these and then animating <laughs> them crazy talk and, and it's called corpse of cock news and it's it's yeah. news being broadcast from hell this is nigel this is katie katie <laughs> Katie's a bitch. She won't let me eat my purple popsicles. Shut up, Nigel. <laughs> I hate you and your assholes. <laughs> this is why we've been married almost 25 years. <laughs> this is my reason. <sighs> it she brings a smile to my time. face for sure. For sure, for sure. All right. Well, we need to we need to start working on ways to bring more smiles to our face. I, you know, ne next year, by the way, is the fifty fifth anniversary of Night of the Living Dead. Damn it! So uh, I'm sure that uh, something's going to be cooked up. I'm not sure exactly what yet. Um, but uh, because we just might be able to bring our cameras and. Get some more footage, you know, some more pictures. Or turn out some video with what we've got from. Oh, we can definitely do promos for it if we yeah. can't come. We can definitely do promos for it. Absolutely. <coughs> Stop talking. All right. I have it. Oh my throat! Actually, I I should have had some water. I'm just my throat's just dry. Oh. So much talking. Well, this was actually very much fun, and and again, I thank you both three all um for for stepping up and coming and spending an hour and a half with us you know anytime gary anytime <laughs> <laughs> so nice all right sean yeah. we gotta we gotta hook up and have a beer sure. we haven't sure. done that in a long time yeah. okay i'll get a room <laughs> for sure i got you we'll hook up get a tattoo then we can all go out and get three yes. there you go beers. there you go because i'm, I'm curious <laughs> about that I've got real estate <laughs> I need covered, and I would love that. <laughs> so, you know, those, those things work in my world. <laughs> Look at all that skin that needs a tattoo. <laughs> I got old lady skin at 51, but still, we can stretch it. I'll bring, I'll bring some number two grip clips. We'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, you're going to make me faint now. That's hilarious. I've got another Bye, one. Bye, crazy people. <laughs> oh, my God. But that would hurt so bad. So will you just be cryptic? Gaff tape. I'm not wasting gaff on that. <laughs> all right shut this thing off before we go we'll be here it'll, all right, it'll guys. Be, it will soon be, oh, otherwise be midnight <laughs> it has been a wonderful time i know jim popped up trisha's link tree in there somewhere um if you want to check out her crazy weird crap oh yeah well well, well all right we're not gonna yeah, go yeah. because he'd, he'd already tossed that up there earlier there it is again no but absolutely this this you know trisha is so talented she's just so unbelievably talented and and and, and yeah it's <laughs> and i'm and and yeah, we didn't even talk about art, you know. Uh, Sean, you started out as yeah, an art. You, when did you get into art, Sean? Uh, I don't know. I remember being a little kid thinking I was going to grow up being a comic book artist, but then I started meeting all my heroes working at comic book stores and working at conventions and realized I better scramble and figure something out real quick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure so, it out. When I figure it out, I'll let you guys know for sure. <laughs> all right see y'all all bye right, talk to you all later this has been a blast anytime have us come back on just to make fun of somebody next time yeah we'll do that <laughs>